Hi there, Johannes Keating here. Thanks for joining me today and just a few brief remarks really on something that's on my mind which relates to what I see as a very, very common trigger of the complex transference feelings uh, in the therapy session with the therapist that gets missed. You know, it's fairly common for therapists to, to understand and see that the patient is having mixed feelings towards you, the therapist, because uh, defenses are being interrupted in some form or fashion, and that mobilizes complex transference feelings, and there's an understanding that, all right, we're in the T, we're in the transference. Uh, this is where we need to park for the time being. So a lot of therapists get that, but what I don't see a lot of, and I watch a lot of therapy videos, uh, is where the therapist is able to see when the patient is actually being emotionally intimate and allowing for emotional closeness. It's not an unlocking of the unconscious, which is why I think a lot of therapists don't see it, because they're used to having that as the primary criteria for really taking down the wall and so on. But for a number of patients that are quite guarded, uh, there's an intermediary step uh, which involves more collaboration, more sincere reflection of their own experience and putting that into words, allowing for common ground. And it really represents a shift from their starting point. And so to catch that uh, would be to, for instance, feedback to the patient that do you notice that now, as you're starting to get down on yourself and avoid eye contact, that that is happening on the heels of just 30 seconds ago where you allowed me very close. You were looking me right in the eye and letting me know da 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 da, you know, something where they're speaking from the heart. Again, it's not an unlocking, but it really is a form of closeness, you know, maybe sharing something very intimate, um, perhaps highly collaborative. Um, there's a certain ineffable quality that's hard to put a finger on, but when someone speaks from the heart, it is, it is so wrong to categorize that as, oh, they're ruminating or they're just intellectualizing or whatever. And so that is what a lot of uh, therapists um, that I see anyway uh, are not putting a finger on and are not identifying and are not incorporating into um, their work. Again, they, they often catch, a lot of therapists often catch that there is something going on in the transference and that uh, that is what needs attention. But when there is a buildup of emotional closeness and intimacy, the patient really is being more undefended and less guarded, speaking from the heart, collaborating, allowing for a common ground. And that represents a shift from their starting point and then seconds after they begin to beat themselves up or they avoid eye contact or they pull out the rug from underneath the shared understandings or whatever it is that is distancing from themselves and from you it's happening because they allowed you close had mixed emotions about that intimacy got anxious and then now managing that anxiety through these defenses helping the patient see that sequence of events which includes clearly identifying and clarifying the trigger, that the trigger was that emotional intimacy and closeness that really was taking place. Uh, that I don't see too often, and yet it is such a, a crucial, critical thing to help the patient see that the intimacy was there, they were doing something productive and good for themselves, and then the cascade of reactions that follow. Right, those reactions, they're not coming out of the blue, they're coming because, in many instances, the patient was beginning to allow for common ground. They were beginning to allow the therapist close and to have intimacy with themselves and uh, the therapist. So, um, okay, that will be all for now. Thank you so much for hanging out, until next time.